All right, the last section we're going to cover today is section 10.5, the ratio and the root tests. Theorem 12 is the ratio test. It says, let a sub n be a series with positive terms and suppose that the limit as n approaches infinity of the n plus 1 term over the nth term is equal to rho. This is a Greek letter rho. Then the series converges if rho is less than 1. So if that limit of the ratio of the, the sequential terms is going to be less than 1, the series diverges if rho is greater than 1 or is infinite, and the test is inconclusive if rho is equal to 1. So what we do for the ratio test is we look at a ratio of the n plus 1 term over the nth term, and then we find that limit. If the limit is less than 1, the series converges. If the limit is greater than 1 or infinity, the series diverges. And if rho is equal to 1, the test is inconclusive and we have to try something else. So let's look at some example problems. In example 1, this is our series. It's a good idea to, before you get started, write down what a sub n is and what a sub n plus 1 is. a sub n is going to be the series that you're given. So I'm going to simplify, or I'll tell you what, I'll start by finding a sub n plus 1. So a sub n is this, a sub n plus 1 means that I'm going to replace n with n plus 1 and then simplify. Well, n plus 1 plus 2 is n plus 3, and 3 to the n plus 1 is going to be 3 to the n times 3. So remember, to use the, the ratio test, I'm going to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 1, which is n plus 1 over 3 to the n times 3, divided by a sub n, which is n plus 2 over 3 to the n. As n approaches infinity, I want to clean this up. I have a complex fraction, a fraction within a fraction. I don't want to write it like that. So this is going to be n plus 1 over 3. 3 times 3 to the n times, and then the reciprocal of this is 3 to the n over n plus 2. And I think from here on out, probably what I'm going to do is, because the terms of our series are usually going to be fractions, instead of writing a fraction over a fraction, I'm going to take a sub n plus 1 and then multiply it by the reciprocal of a sub n. It just saves me from writing this step. So notice what's going to cancel out here. The 3 to the n's are going to cancel out. And that means that I could rewrite this as the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 over 3 times n plus 2. Notice the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are the same. So this limit is going to be equal to the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. Since the limit as n approaches infinity of the n plus 1 term over the nth term is less than 1, that means that this series is going to converge by the ratio test. On part b, we're looking at the series n equals 1 to infinity of n factorial over 10 to the n. The first thing I want to do is identify, well, what is my n plus 1 term? I replace n with n plus 1, and that's going to give me n plus 1 factorial divided by 10 to the n plus 1. Remember, with factorials, when we expand them, we're just subtracting 1 each time. So this n plus 1 factorial, I could write as n plus 1, and then I subtract 1 from that, and then that gives me n and I'm just going to put a factorial on there. We would keep subtracting 1 until we got down to 1. The next term would be n minus 1, n minus 2, all the way down until I get 3 times 2 times 1. Well, I'm going to stop expanding and just write the factorial when I get to n because I'm hoping that that will cancel with that n factorial there. And then 10 to the n plus 1 I could rewrite as 10 times 10 to the n because when you multiply with a common base, you add the exponents. So this is my n plus 1 term. And when I use the ratio test, I'm going to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of my n plus 1 term, which I said is n plus 1 times n factorial over 10 times 10 to the n, divided by the nth term. But dividing by the nth term, and this is my a sub n, I'm just going to multiply by the reciprocal, and that's going to give me 10 to the n over n factorial. Then we look for things that will cancel. Well, this n factorial cancels with this n factorial. This 10 to the n cancels with that 10 to the n. And what I'm left with is the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 over 10. And that limit is equal to infinity. Infinity is greater than 1, so therefore this diverges by the ratio test. But you've got to show the work. The ratio test is a great way to remove factorials from the problem. 
If you have a factorial in the series, in your infinite series, try the ratio test. And for part C, we have several factorials and exponents. So I've got to first find a sub n plus 1. And all I do is I replace n in this argument of this series with n plus 1. So that's going to give me 4 raised to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 factorial times n plus 1 factorial divided by 2 times n plus 1 factorial. Then I need to simplify this. Well, what I'm going to do is distribute that 2 across there, and that's going to give me 2n plus 2 factorial. So that means that I can rewrite this as 4 to the n times 4 times n plus 1 times n factorial times n plus 1 times n factorial, because I'm just expanding each one of these out, and then this is going to be 2n plus 2 factorial. Well, that expands out into 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times 2n factorial. And I'm stopping at the 2n factorial because I'm hoping that it will cancel with this whenever I divide a sub n plus 1 by a sub n. And I'm stopping with the n factorials on top for the exact same reason. Remember, when you expand out factorials, you start with the factor that's in front of the factorial, then subtract 1 to get the next factor. 2n plus 2 minus 1 is 2n plus 1. If I subtract 1 from this, then I'm going to get 2n plus 0, which is just 2n factorial. So this is what I'm going to use as my simplified form of a sub n plus 1. Then to use the ratio test, I'm going to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 1. And I can factor a 2 out of this factor in front, so that's going to give me 2 times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 times 2n factorial. So all I did was I factored a 2 out of this first factor, and that left me 2 times n plus 1. Now I'm going to multiply this by the reciprocal of a sub n, because that's the same thing as dividing by a sub n. And that's going to give us 2n factorial over 4 to the n times n factorial times n factorial. So once you've set up your ratio here, you want to cancel where you can. The two n factorials are going to cancel. The n factorial here will cancel. This one will cancel. And the 4 to the n will also cancel. And 2 goes into 4 two times. And this n plus 1 is going to cancel. Then we write down what's left over. And that's going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 times n plus 1 over 2 2n plus 1. Notice the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator. So as n approaches infinity, this is going to be leading coefficient over leading coefficient, and that is equal to 1. What does that tell us? That tells us that the ratio test is inconclusive. So do we just give up? You want to just give up. We're not going to just give up. We've got to try something else. What is a really easy test to check? How about the nth term test for divergence? Let's try that. Because if this is equal to 1, odds are good the nth term test for divergence is going to work. So let's look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth term of this, this series up here. So that's going to be 4 to the n times n factorial times n factorial over 2n factorial. Now to look at this limit, I've got to decide what's going to grow faster. Is the numerator going to get bigger faster? Clearly this is going off to infinity over infinity, right? I don't want to use L'Hopital because I don't know how to take the derivative of a factorial. So I'm going to use the concepts we learned from chapter 7 where we said which grows faster, the numerator or the denominator. Factorials get ridiculously big ridiculously fast. So I have factorials on top and factorials on bottom. Another way of writing n factorial times n factorial is n factorial squared. Now in the numerator, when you square something, it gets bigger faster, right? In the denominator, I don't have a square factorial. I have a double. Which gets bigger faster, squaring or doubling? Squaring gets bigger faster. That means that the numerator is going to grow faster than the denominator, and this is going to be equal to infinity because the numerator gets bigger faster than the denominator does. So that means that that's not equal to zero, and our conclusion then would be that our series diverges. Our series diverges by the nth term test, more specifically. 
I didn't want to use the nth term test if I didn't have to because I don't want to deal with those factorials. And the easiest way to avoid dealing with the factorials is to use the ratio test because things cancel nicely, especially factorials and exponents whenever you use the ratio test. But when I got that my test was inconclusive, I had no choice but to face those factorials. And that's where I said, well, let's try the nth term test for divergence. And because squaring a factorial gets bigger faster than doubling a factorial, the numerator gets bigger faster than the denominator, and that's going to give us infinity, which is not equal to zero. And the last test in this section is the root test. We want to use the root test whenever we have an nth root of something. So let's let a sub n be a series with a sub n being greater than or equal to zero for some n greater than or equal to some point. Then the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of a sub n is equal to rho. The series will converge if rho is less than one, just like the ratio test, and the series diverges if rho is greater than one or infinity and the test is inconclusive if rho is equal to 1. So the conditions here for what that limit is equal to are the same for both the ratio test and the root test. You can recognize when you want to use a root test because you're going to have things raised to an nth power. So for part a here, I want to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of, and then I can rewrite this as 4 over 3n raised to a power of n. Because I have the distributive property of exponents here, I can rewrite this since both the numerator and denominator are raised to a power of n. I can rewrite that as one single fraction raised to a power of n. Well, if I take the nth root of an nth power, that's going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 4 over 3n because the power and the root are going to cancel each other out. They're inverse operations of each other. And as n goes to infinity, this ends up being 4 over infinity, and 4 over infinity is equal to 0. 0 is less than 1, so our conclusion would be that this series converges by the root test. For part b, this is our series. We have the natural log of e squared plus 1 over n raised to the n plus 1. Do y'all remember the limit definition of e? It will probably come in handy here. This is probably going to come in handy for part b. So we're going to write this as the limit as n goes to infinity of what? To take the nth root, what I would do is I would raise this to a power of 1 over n n. Because remember, if we had the nth root of a to the m, we could write that as a to the m over n, where the numerator would be the power on the base and the denominator would be the root. So since I want to take the nth root of this term right here, I'm going to raise that to the 1 nth power. And what happens when you raise a power to a power? You multiply the exponents. And n plus 1 divided by n is going to give us 1 plus 1 over n. As n goes to infinity, what is this term going to? As n goes to infinity, this term is going to 0, and this term is going to 0, and that's going to give us the natural log of e squared plus 0 raised to a power of 1. And the natural log of e squared is 2, and 2 is bigger than 1, so what does that tell us about this series? This diverges by the root test. And then for part c, we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of 1 minus 1 over 3 to the n raised to the n. And since I want to take the nth root, I'm going to raise that to the 1 over n. So there, when I distribute this or raise a power to a power, I multiply the exponent. I'm going to get 1, and that's going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus, and I'm going to rewrite this as 1 third divided by n, and that's going to be equal to, as n goes to infinity, that term's going to 0, this term is going to 0, this is going to give us 1. And what does that mean? The root test is inconclusive. So do we give up? No, we don't. What did I tell you we do? Let's look at the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n. Well, that's going to be 1 minus 1 over 3n raised to a power of n. This is where this limit definition of e is going to come in. And if we 
look at this limit definition of e, it needs a plus there and it needs a constant on top with just an n in the denominator. I can rewrite this as the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus and then make this a negative 1 third over n raised to a power of n. And this would be equal to e raised to the negative 1 third power. And that's going to be equal to 1 over the cube root of e. That's what that limit is equal to, but all I care about is that that is not equal to zero, and that means that while the root test is inconclusive, our series is going to diverge by the nth term test for divergence. I told you, and I meant it when I told you, that it's a good idea to memorize this limit definition of e. Otherwise, you probably would not have realized that this limit here was actually equal to e to the negative one-third. If I didn't recognize that this was equal to e to the negative one-third, I would not have known that that was not zero, and I couldn't have reached my conclusion for this problem. So this wraps up section 10.5, the ratio and the root test.